Okay. All right, that one worked perfectly. This uh, I was using Bandicam, by the way, to answer your question. And so oh, okay. uh, the first time I was actually just using the Windows 10 audio recorder and just seeing if the, the sound that's coming into the system was being recorded. And it literally, that one was only capturing my mic. But uh, good old Bandicam. <laughs> it's right? like, that captures everything. It's, like, it. it's even here in the air conditioner in the background. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of like, shut up! Okay, I'm trying to record over here. All right, yeah, stink it, AZ. No, don't turn off. I need you. You know, so kind of having that kind of moment. Anyway, uh, hey, first off, let me just thank you guys so much for uh, for doing this today. I just really appreciate it. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of a background, so I started kind of getting serious about putting together this YouTube channel about two months ago, which is really cool, and then just started you know, cranking out videos about a lot of the different story content and just trying to answer questions that I saw on forums and stuff like that. And uh, it actually started picking up steam over the last couple patches where people were actually starting to click on stuff. And one of the major things I noticed is I have about 95% male viewership. And so nice. this, this huge part of, uh, of putting this together was I was literally trying to think, like, how, how can I help get uh, female gamers into the game and how can I do this in such a way that, you know, is uh, is pretty non-threatening and stuff like that. So the idea kind of came about, I was like, why don't I actually interview some players from the game? And this is something I don't actually see happen on other people's YouTube channels. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I just thought it'd be fun, because, I don't know, I, I don't know if you guys ever listened to, the, like, uh, Kevin Smith's podcast podcasts or anything. Yeah. yeah! Yeah, I love it. And so uh, the only thing is, the only ones I've done thus far was everybody all being in the same room all at the same time. And being able to talk over the same mic, and then that way you could kind of control the sound. So I was like, I wanted to try this out tonight and just see if it was even possible to do this with Bandicam. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm basically just doing like a screen capture, and I'll just rip out the audio later uh, for file size mm -hmm. and everything like that, and then put this up on my website probably within the next few days. But uh, but yeah, I just I don't know. I was like, when I was trying to think of people I wanted to interview, you guys were at the top of the list, like with a. I bullet. feel flattered. Oh, 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 stop it. Oh, shucks. Okay. Ah, shucks. Yeah, now I'm a blushing. <laughs> I was actually, uh, it's actually really funny. I actually went on dates the last two nights. Uh, not a bead of sweat, no problem whatsoever. Today was the day I was getting nervous, or I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. Jeez, interviewing people. Oh, I hope this goes well, man. All the expectations. I mean, I'm sure you guys don't have any, but I'm like, ah, oh. that it was it was crazy. It's one of those things where it's like, I can't believe this is the day my hands are shaking. You know, it's just uh, it's adorable. Oh, crazy. I, just, I took like five shots. I'm good. <laughs> so did I. No, just kidding. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so anyway, I was wondering if you guys wouldn't mind starting, uh, just for the people who are going to be listening to this channel, uh, if you guys could just start off just a little bit with who are you? So I'll, I'll just make a quick introduction to say, like, you know, Penny and Zidoff, you know, uh, two of the leads of Morals and Mayhem, one of the premier raiding guilds on, you know, Harbinger server. But if you guys wouldn't mind filling in some of those gaps of just a little bit, like, you know, Xenoth, Penny, whichever we want of you want to start. Like, how long have you guys been doing this stuff? I mean, how long have you been raiding and uh, MMO gaming? Uh, Penny, you want to start that? Uh, sure. Um, <sighs> my MMO gaming experience didn't start with Spator. It mm -hmm. actually started with um, Terra and um, a few games on Steam, like Left 4 Dead, which I don't really... They're sort of MMO, but not quite. Mm -hmm. Um... But I, I was on Terra for a good couple of years, and I moved over to Swator in the fall of 2013. It was right after the the launch of the Hook Cartel. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Nightmare Power had just fallen off of uh, DF and DP, uh, Dread Fortress and Dread Palace. So I missed all of that, and I honestly did not get serious about raiding, mm -hmm. um, mostly due to the server that I was on. Um... I was on Berrigan Colony, which is... Yes! <laughs> more, 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 I know, right? We're like, uh, the BC survivors. <laughs> yes. That's right. Um, but I know I, all three of us, I believe, came from, from Berrigan Colony, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I was on there. I was in a very small guild. I, I had, at the time, really great friends. 
Um, but they were not into raiding. Like, I heard horror stories from someone in my guild about <laughs> raiding on Harbinger. Mm -hmm. It was just awful, and all these people had expectations of you, and I was like, oh, God, I would, that sounds terrible. Like, what? And... There was one. I was like, was that guild. me? I was actually had a second there. I was like, wait, I think that <laughs> oh, was wait, me. <laughs> when I came oh, back no. and was telling you guys about uh, Aura and the team I was working with, the Paramount. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> like, oh wait, do you even remember that conversation? Okay, that might have been me. Okay. No, Sorry. no, it wasn't you. I, this was before I knew Zenoff as well as you, Zach. Um, yeah. This was well before I knew you guys, um, but <laughs> I'd heard horror stories about Harbinger, and I was like, oh my god, I would never want to meet these people, like, oh, this sounds terrible, and I had one friend who is very near and dear to me, she loved raiding, and at the time I was playing an assassin DPS, um, and she would pull me through all these raids because they needed a body, basically. Um, and it kind of gave me my first taste of, like, competent Swator rating. Mm -hmm. And I was hooked. Like, it was fun. Like, the atmosphere being in TS or Mumble with them, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I was doing a DPS class at the time. It wasn't my favorite, but I was okay at it. I actually hit my swing with the rating community, um, or my stride, I should say, with 3.0. When the 12 times XP happened, I yeah. leveled up here. And 3.0 was like my golden, like, I can do this moment. Because I really found my niche. I found something that I was exceptionally good at. Oh, exceptional is a strong word. Let me not float, like, you know, I'm not trying to like... like <laughs> She's like, the keyboard would levitate as I would play. Exactly. Um, okay, maybe I should say exceptional. You are so a healer. Like, you know, I found out that I was actually good at something. Yeah. And yeah. that's actually where I first met Zenoff. It was hilarious. We were doing, I we were doing 16 men, <laughs> S&D men, and Zenoff had just moved back from the Harbinger. And someone, the person who was leading it, we were pulling Hateful Entity. Oh, yes. And yes, level sync, da da da, it wasn't a thing at that point, but... I mean, it was still difficult getting sixteen people to be coordinated and yeah, hateful to entity not is not something. You, it's like no, you don't just walk in and face hateful entity. You know, it's like Mordor. No, you no. know what I'm saying? One, it's like not even not five levels over. Like <laughs> exactly. People can say all they want, but if you don't have like the team for it, mm -hmm. it was still difficult. And I had never seen. It. I didn't know what hateful entity was. Right. Like I got asked to do it because they knew that I was an an okay healer, and I was like, okay, what is it? <laughs> which led to a very <laughs> loud round of laughter in TS. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, you missed that. Um, but that's like that's like my first real taste of raiding. I wasn't on a team. Someone just asked me to come in and heal. I was in vendor gear, which wasn't set bonus. I wasn't augmented. I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and we all have those moments, you know? Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. People... people I think people kind of get caught up in, you know, I've been doing this for so long, it's a new tier of gear, I have to re, you know, I have to re-gear myself, and they get so caught up in, like, I already know how to do this, that they forget the people who are new to the game who might want to learn, like myself. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to find someone who's not going to sit there and laugh at you for being like, well, hey, can you help me? Mm -hmm. um, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm terrible with numbers. And I had no <laughs> idea what a sub bonus was. I had no idea what Hazel yeah. Entity was or a crest or anything. Yeah, what's a stat budget? <laughs> what's this? Yeah. How do I need that? What are augments? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I feel you 100%. Absolutely. So that's actually how I first met Zenoff was in those Hateful Entity pools. And uh, from there, I actually got on his team. Um I started off as a DPS, which we won't go into because my Marauder DPS is just adorable, and it's not something I ever do. <laughs> you know, and that, that was actually yep. something I was going to mention. Uh, so, uh, between the two of you guys, uh, for the listening audience that doesn't know you guys, what is your favorite class? What's your what's your premier class? Um, I do Merc and Sork. Mm -hmm. uh, heals. I also do... I can do Merc DPS and Arsenal spec, and I can also do um, Madness and Lightning in uh, Sork. So those are my two. Those are my two favorites, right. and also the pub variations, Mando and Sage. Absolutely. And then how about you, Zenoth? 
I hate that you're making me narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to narrow it down? What is this? Because I, I know what I know you as. And that's um, the thing. It's like, because uh, yeah, when we talked about a marauder coming up, I was like, oh, Jesus. We're oh, going to have to. Here it goes. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> off the By yeah. the way. So, um, yeah. But yeah, if I had to choose one, it would definitely be my marauder. Um, I may I started out as a sin, but that didn't that didn't stick for too terribly long. Yeah. Sins are not viable in 1.x. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, I was going to say, we all started off as uh, as Assassins and Shadows, actually, and then we ended up in our different, in our different classes. Uh, Xenoph ended up on Marauder, you ended up as, uh, as like, a Merc healer, and I ended up as a Sniper, for the most mm -hmm. part. But we all actually got our starts in, you know, in uh, Shadows and Assassins, which I think is really interesting. I was like, is this, like, the Universal Starter <laughs> class? Like, and then everybody just kind of goes like, this is crap! I want to specialize! And then, like, we run over to, to something else. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so Zen, I was actually wondering, so how did you get started in Star Wars? Because I think you've had a pretty long road in this game. Uh, yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, when I first started MMOs, I started off in a game most people probably heard of, Star Wars Galaxies. Yes! Uh, way, <laughs> yes! way back when. Um, I'm really bad. It's just going to show how young I am. Uh, I was in <laughs> elementary school, the end of elementary school, when Star Wars Galaxies first came out. Um, when it first came out, I started up on there, and I was never into the end game type stuff. I was yeah. there for the social aspect of it, mm -hmm. because it's one of those things, it didn't really have an end game. It was, oh, you can go to the Death Watch bunker if you want, but that's that's about it <laughs> at the time. Until NGE dropped, and there's all these raids, all this crap. But mm -hmm. I was long gone by then. Um, after I left that, I went to uh, Anarchy Online for a little bit. Um... Played that for a little. It didn't. It didn't really stick, but it was free to play. It was just something to do. Mm -hmm. uh, then I came to Spator when it dropped because I was like, "Oh, new Star Wars MMO. SWG <laughs> just set down. I beta go." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. as soon as I could apply for the beta, I was in. I was hitting it. I was checking my email every day. Did I get in? Did I get in? Did I get in? Mm -hmm. I finally got in one time. I had an absolute blast and. Unfortunately, when the actual game released, I didn't get to like start right with launch. I did oh, no, not really? have a good enough. I did not. I didn't have a no good enough computer for it. Um, oh. When I finally got my decent gaming rig, uh, it was right after KP was released. Oh yes. So okay. Yeah. Once KP dropped, that's when I started in. Fun fact, I was a filthy RPer. <laughs> I didn't as start... As we all were, man! We all started as on as PC! We all say, well, we actually, all were, actually... Oh, Jesus, I think uh, we all started on different servers, I think because BC was a catch-all for a lot mm. of the servers that mm. shut down yeah. uh, SRP, because uh, I remember that's how I got my start, was actually mm. I got started in the beta. I, uh, I originally was a WoW player, and then one of my friends from there, one of the girls uh, that I used to know there, she actually got invited into the beta. And I don't know if that was because she's a girl and they wanted more female opinions or if she just got, like, the random lottery. I didn't care. She let me create a character on the beta. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Right. <laughs> and so I actually, like, one of my most prized possessions uh, from this game is actually a picture of the very first Jedi Guardian that I ever made. And the reason it's so prized is because you can't actually take the Miralukian race and use this same hair and face combo with the uh, the blind eyes that the, the character has. And mm. so you, you actually can't do that in the actual right. launch. That was something you could only do in one of the beta patches. That's actually, like, that was the picture I sent to Eric Musco to tell him, like, I was serious. Like, I have been with this <laughs> game for a very long time because, right. you know, and it's got my character name Zicaden up there. And so I was like, this is me. Like, this is, this <laughs> yeah. is how long I've been here. That's right. You know, it's like, this I'll, is right. <laughs> I know, I'll tell you how to make this game better. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dev Team, sir, and uh, and yeah, and I started off on an RP server as well, just like uh, yeah. I think a lot of us did. And I mean, that server died. I mean, within yeah. um, I can't remember how long it was. I was raiding with a group uh, that was led by this dude Tycho, who was a uh, vanguard. And at the time, I was only playing pub. And then I literally, it was literally like two people on a fleet. 
at any given time. Me and like what other poor sucker was like around there. Yeah. And it was kind of cool because like before I actually transferred over, I actually was like running around all the different maps, like trying to gather as many resources as I could because there was no competition. But then again, it was also like the loneliest you've ever felt. <laughs> and in an MMO, you're like, where yeah. is everybody? It was like, it was just like, have, I am. I'll myself on repeat. Yeah, it was like, I am legend, you know? <laughs> you're just kind of like, where, where, where's maybe a helpful dog or something? Oh, yeah. And when I got to, uh, to BC, it was just like, people! I, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, exactly. uh, and then when I got to BC, I mean, obviously. Uh, I don't know how we all ended up raiding on BC. Uh, that is like such yeah. an anti-raid place. <laughs> That's actually a really good question. How did you guys get started raiding on BC? Uh, on yeah. our server? Um, well, first thing is, I don't know exactly if you remember back in the day. Shoot, I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday I, I, morning. Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I'm at that point right now, too. Um... <laughs> There were quite a few raiding guilds back in the day. I remember Sovereign was one. Uh, oh, yeah. WBI yeah. was another. Ascension. Um, all Jeez. these different guilds I heard of. Yeah. Like, at the time, I was. I was nothing but an RPer, and I was an SM hero. Mm -hmm. And I would sit there, and I would see these pugs, like, looking for, need one sub for hard mode EC. And I'm like, what, what the hell is EC? I know, I know. Like, what is know. that? Yeah. It's like, uh, um, I don't even know where to go with it. Um, <laughs> but I was like, I would easy there, content? Easy yeah, content? Exactly. Maybe? Like, easy content? <laughs> is that anything like Black Talon? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. And I was to the point, I knew nothing about stat budgets, rating, yeah. anything. I was, I was that guy who would sit there as a deception assassin and gear for endurance. Because I thought the bigger you were helpful, the better you off you'd be. I was wrong. Yeah. Um, well, we all did that at some point, though. We yeah. all did that. Don't feel bad. Like, I, did that, I did that for too long. Yeah. Strength <laughs> makes you carry more. While, <laughs> you <know>? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Strength makes you carry more. I'm like, wait, this is an Elder Scrolls. What am I doing? I know. <laughs> um, but no, I actually... Um, when my guild fell apart, towards the end of when my first guild started to crumble... Um, I was starting to hit rating just a little bit. I was working on a Sin Tank. Um, and this guild, Shades of the Eternal Void. I will never forget this guild. Um, somehow, I weaseled my way in. <laughs> Bullshit. I, here's a little tip for kids out there. <laughs> Bullshit your way in and then just practice until you know it. Because <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. Their, their team won. At the time, I had a 55, a 55 Marauder. At the time, they were doing a DF and DP. <laughs> I literally, I weaseled my way in. They were like, we need a DPS for our uh, team one sub. Um, they were like, does anybody have a DPS? I was like, I have a Marauder. They were like, do you know it? I'm like, yes. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> sure. Yes? Question yeah. mark? <laughs> and so I went in there. Like, this was well before the raid. They had like an hour and a half, two hours. I will never forget how many pages I had open on uh, Google Chrome, like for sample Marauder parses, Marauder <laughs> Dolphy Guide. Like I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> and I get in there, and they're like, Hey, you actually did pretty good. How long have you been raiding? I'm like, I've only been around for maybe at this point, DFDP had dropped. It was mm. maybe six months I was raiding. Mm -hmm. I was like, Look, I haven't been doing this this long. I'll be honest. And they're like, You did really good. It, we have somebody that might be dropping, do you want their spot? I was like, hey, yeah. sure, I'll take it. And then from there, um, character transfers came up for a little while, and I moved over to Pot 5. Everybody from that guild sort of moved over into Chosen from Pot 5, which was a NIM rating guild, like Death and Taxes and stuff like that. Okay. So, my start was really easy. I hate to, I hate to say that, to say like, I... I'm not going to say bought my way in, but I sat there. I did the work for it, but I knew I knew people really early. Like, I knew Trill. I knew people like that caliber of people. Yeah. Like Trill and Yolo and Survali. I didn't know them, but I knew people like them. And from them, I would just sort of branch it off and... I would start raiding with four or five chosen uh, Invictus on Harbinger, all these different guilds, mm -hmm. and then I would go back to BC. 
<laughs> yeah. right before I met Penny, I'd go back to BC, everyone knows who I am all of a sudden. I'm like, what? Yeah, Why? I know, it's like, when I, did I, I become the, like, the TV oh newscaster, God, the, the local celebrity? Are you from Harbinger? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, who are you? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god, I've seen your parts on you on a uh, on a uh, tour parts. I'm like, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> weird. It, it's like, a weird feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it's like I come back and I'm like known. I'm just like, what? What is this? I'm I'm nobody. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've I stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And from there, the whole thing with long story short, too late. Guilds come and guilds come and go. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm like, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Penny yeah. and a few of our friends, we make a guild on Harbinger, <laughs> yeah. and to present day. <laughs> Actually, that was going to be one of the questions I was going to ask. Is like, okay, so uh, to my audience who doesn't know, uh, Harbinger is one of the better rating servers right now, in my opinion, anyway. And that's definitely one of the draws that pulled me over there. And what's really great was uh, I actually had this, like, gigantic layoff between rating, and I bumped into... I think I bumped... Uh, did Penny, did you bump into me? Did I bump into you? I can't remember exactly how it was. On Harbinger? You. On Harbinger. Yeah. yeah. I bumped into you. Yeah. I yeah. saw you, I believe yeah, it was on PubSide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, I, I had had this titanic layoff, but then... Uh, but. That's why I think when Penny let me know that you guys had actually created Morons of Mayhem. And at the time, Penny described it as a super chill, like super casual, <laughs> we're all just hanging out kind of like mm -hmm. guild. And I was like, cool, I'm not really looking to do much any or anything right now. Yeah. And then I think I'm within like the last couple months while I've been doing this YouTube channel, like poking in, all of a sudden I come back and they're like, we wanted four Nightmare Raid yeah. teams and recruiting. 250 yeah, that's, members and four teams that's, that's, later. That's right. And I'm like, I'm like really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah, and so, uh, and so my note to my audience is like, okay, so, you know, there's definitely different opinions on what super chill, super casual <laughs> wow. guilds are like, but okay, okay, I... Okay, okay, in my yeah. defense, now, in my defense, guys, when we first made Morons and Mayhem, it was literally to move our eight raid members from Pubside to mm -hmm. Impside, because mm -hmm. Pubside is tends to be a little more dead it's a lot harder to pug on pub yep. side it really a is bit, yeah and i just notice an overall lack of um activity mm -hmm. so m side best side i mean always i loved my merc i loved my sork they were home to me basically and m side is where i had all my friends you know all the people that i had rated with pugged with everything like that mm -hmm. and Honestly, when we first made the guild, when you first joined the guild, Zach, I think we only had like 15 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> our yeah. eight bodies. We had a couple of casual people who were just like our friends who threw in alts for us. Mm -hmm. And then we had all of our alts. And it was literally just us and like you mm -hmm. and a couple of others. Right. It was, and... it was about 50 people, but mo again, most of them were alts. It was, if yeah. you look at unique accounts for guilds, it was probably 12 people. Yeah. yeah. Which... Obviously, Star Wars: The Old Republic doesn't, because if you saw the new ads for the new expansion and their like celebration of five years of being here, they're like eighty-seven million characters, yeah. <laughs> you know, played right? in this game. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I didn't exactly bragging about your, you know, I mean, I have thirty tunes, you know, so it's I like we, <laughs> yeah, it's like let's go back and do the math here, Star Wars. How many people do we really have played this game? <laughs> um, you know, let's uh, let's let's brag about the right stuff. But I, right. yeah, but yeah, so yeah, I was actually gonna say. Um, so how did how did you guys change it from being just like 15 people? And I feel like this is valuable information for people who are looking to be in this game and, and try to build up their guilds. How did it go from 15 people just casually playing into like a four-team um, nightmare juggernaut in like spam. several months? Spam the shit out of Reddit and support forums. Uh, no, no we, we've only made a couple of posts on the forums, in all yeah. seriousness. Um, yeah. It started with we would pug on fleet. Um, because when Zenoff or, you know, me and Kaleg or, you know, when, when we're bored, what, what are you going to do? You're mm -hmm. going to pug, you know? And we started getting, or well, at least I did, I started getting whispers like, hey, you know, is your guild recruiting? You know, I'd really love to raid with you guys. Mm -hmm. And so I brought it up to um, Zenoff and Kasumi and Kaleg. Um, You know, hey, guys, we have people interested in wanting to be in our guild. Like, should we look at recruiting? And... Um, we kind of gave the go ahead, um, mm -hmm. and we formed our second team. I actually ran into um, Idler and Jasno, people you used to raid with, and that yes. kind of prompted yep. our second team. 
And from the second team, it just kind of exploded. Like, we just needed tanks on the forums, which is all we posted for. And we started getting all these yeah. apps for, well, if you need a DPS or if you need a healer. And it just hasn't stopped. I yeah. mean, the more we pug, the more people know us. And apparently we're fairly well known on, mm -hmm. you know, fleet and on the forums mm -hmm. and stuff. Which, I mean, I'm incredibly flattered. Like, yeah. the guild that I ran, <laughs> it, it, it fell apart. Like, yeah. I basically got, happens. you know, I got removed from the leadership position, which, you know, it happens, whatever. Um, it's happened no, to me, I'm too. Done. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. But, you know, being able to see that I have a guild now that has, we almost have five teams. Mm -hmm. i just looking, by the way, I just need a tank for our fifth team. <laughs> 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 And by the way, to my happy subscribers, if you are looking to join Morons and Mayhem, please go ahead and send a direct message to Zach through YouTube, and we'd be happy to make up an interview. Right. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we have almost five teams running, and we almost always mm -hmm. have people online. If it's not peak hours, it does tend to be under 10 people, but that's because we have people playing in all different time zones we have some yeah. australians we have some um you know east coast central and you know pacific and you know we have players from every player base and we have a wide range of age groups as well as both male and females like i am really proud to say we have quite a few female raiders in the in the guild it's it's mm -hmm. great um before when i first started raiding every time i pop into ts the reaction was always oh you're a girl yeah <laughs> <You'd>... <laughs> yep. don't yeah, don't hi. repeat that penny <laughs> that's what i said <laughs> no i uh yeah actually and that's that's like a huge reaction because i mean we've all met and i think this is something that it has it still carries such a weird stigma anytime you meet girl players i think by default until we hear their voice on team speak we all Everyone's assume a dude. it's a dude yeah we yeah, all do guy. yeah and that's okay <laughs> yeah you know that's a safe assumption literally in any game mm -hmm. you play everybody's a dude for yep. me everybody's a dude Mm -hmm. Like, until I hear you in TS or some type of voice chat, everyone's a dude. And that's okay if you think the same thing about me. Like, until we get into a voice chat, whether it's for a raid or, you know, whatever, you know, that's okay. Because yeah. we may never see each other again. Like, yeah. we may never pug together again. We may never do anything like that. And that's literally okay. Right. But that's that was, like, always the reaction, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you're really a girl? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden, it's all and... the whispers, like, hello. <laughs> you know? Hello, how are you? Hi. Yeah. I mean, I get those anyways because I play <laughs> predominantly female teams. I wish I was joking. Yeah. Um, and I don't even dress them, like, in slave girl outfits. Like, they are wearing, like, full body armor. And yeah. I still get the creepy whispers from people on fleet, like, guys, really? And it's not just on BC, it's on Harbinger, too. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. And, like, that's why I'm okay with everybody thinking I'm a dude. If you think I'm a dude, that's cool. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's just well, the no. most creepy whisper I have to deal with. Yeah. But, we, we have about, um, I'd say, anywhere between 8 and 10 females, I think, in the guild. Mm -hmm. I don't keep track of, like, every single one, but yeah. we have about 10 you know, other female raiders, and almost every single raid team has at least one female on it, which I think is awesome. Yeah, um, statistically speaking, that's that's phenomenal. Yeah, um, yeah. I was actually going to ask, uh, you know, Penny. I mean, you know, it, there's such a stigma that girls don't play video games, but they obviously do. You know, oh. what what's been like the toughest part for you, uh, being, you know, a girl in what is pretty much like male dominated area. You know, and I, I'm not saying that's fair or that it's right. It's just that a lot of guys do goof around and play video games. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, like, what do, you, what do you feel like that's been for you as a, as a girl? I mean, it was always fun back when I was, you know, strictly a console gamer. Like, I played Mario. I played mm -hmm. all that. And it's always great when you get invited to parties and they break that out. And you're like, yo, I can play that. Yeah. I want a shot. And they look at you like you grew a second head or something. <laughs> and then when you show that you yeah. actually know what you're doing, it's like you're now part of, like, the bro circle. Yeah. And I think the whole thing about girls not playing video games, that's just so old. Like, it's just old-fashioned mm -hmm. thinking. Um, I think that, you know, in this day and age where everything is very much electronic, Yeah. you know, um, it's going to be less... Um, 
not less common, um, but it's definitely gonna be more frequent. There we go. That you run into a that you run into a girl. Yeah. Um, it's becoming less of a stigma, and you know we still sometimes encounter that in games, um, which is always sad. Like. Mm-hmm. You never want to discourage a girl from playing a video game just because she's a girl doesn't mean she can't do it. Right, right, absolutely. (laughs) I like to sit down and order a pizza and veg out and raid. Like, Mm -hmm. why can't I do that? Right. So, I mean, honestly, if you feel like you can do it and if you're good at it, go for it. It's it's crazy. Oh, go ahead, CNF, yeah. I'll, I'll, before I, uh, I don't know. I lost my train of thought there for a minute. I was going to say, <laughs> don't worry. I'm, I'm uh, riveted to hear uh, what your uh, perspectives are uh, of being a female gamer in a man's yeah, right? world. <laughs> no. yeah. um, oh, my boobs. Um, no. Um, boobs. No, before I was before I was into Swatora, I played Halo. I was on a semi-professional team. I went to some tournaments. Oh, I and didn't know that. I'll admit, I'll admit, there have been times... There'll be a girl on the team. I'll get my fucking ass handed to me. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, wow. I can now say I have lost to a girl. I got my ass beat by a girl. Yeah. Super. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? Hey, you're the better player than I. You're a better player than I. Yeah. Like I'm not. I don't think of it as, oh, I just lost to a girl. I'm so fucking like, you know, oh, uh, this is such a downer for my self esteem or anything. I'm like. No, I'm gonna go back and watch that. I'm gonna be like, "How did you outplay me there? How did you yeah. outplay me here?" Yeah. Like, if you're better, I'm gonna learn from you like anybody else. Shoot. Oh, I, know. I will say though, aside from the few creepy whispers, um, but that's Zenoff has gotten a creepy whisper on his female tunes. So it's not just because mm-hmm. you know, it's not like there's no like Spidey sense. Like, oh, this one's actually a girl. They literally yeah. just get on anything that has digital boobs. But yeah. <laughs> I will say though most of the issues that I've encountered have actually been from other female players. Really? Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, do tell. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I feel like it's some type of competition. If you usually have more than one female on a team, and this isn't the same for everybody. I'm just, it's a very generalization right. in my experience. If you have more than one female on a team, especially if they're having to do something together, whether it's tank mm-hmm. or heal or dps it causes like an unseen friction like (laughs) their femininity is threatened because they're having to heal or dps or tank with another female and you know i have definitely felt that way i felt that i somehow threatened someone um with the fact that i was a girl and that i was pulling well yeah doing great on my class and it was an issue. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like other women should discourage or try to uh, get their fellow female out of the team because they feel threatened for some reason. Yeah. And, or, you know, or just start drama or rumors or anything like that about them. Like, I've had numerous different types of things happen. All because I raided with a fellow female. Uh, rumors, um, cattiness, um, you know, just outright bad attitude. Yeah. It's It was surprising, and it was kind of hurtful. Like, yeah. you know, there's a small group of us playing this game... We should band together instead of sitting here trying to tear <laughs> I, each other up. I know, right? Like... Oh, it's crazy. And you know, it's funny, guys. We, I feel like guys tear at each other all the time, and they'll say mm-hmm. it's like, "Oh, I'm doing it because you know, like we're bros, and you know, the hazing culture, and mm-hmm. we're all, you know, it's how we make a guy feel like a team." But I actually feel like a lot of times when you really like dig in a little bit in private conversations, you find out. Oh man, I really liked being top DPS, and now this other guy's kind of doing it. Or hey, I really mm-hmm. like being a tank, and now I feel a little challenged because this guy has a different way of doing things. And why does he have to always disagree with me? And I've mm-hmm. I've seen it, you know, so much with guys oh, really? that I feel like we just we sort of just kind of push to the side and just accept like, oh, that's just that's just guys being guys, and we don't always think like, hey, you know, girls go through the same thing too when you have mm-hmm. you know multiple personalities on a team. And there's different levels of... Because, I mean, you guys have felt it. In every team that you're in, there's different layers of chemistry. Where oh, some yeah. people really work well together. It's, and actually, that's why I'm doing the interview with, with you two guys specifically. Because you guys have a really good working chemistry. By the way, note to all people listening to this. Uh, to my knowledge, Penny and Zenoff don't date each other. <laughs> They're, no, but, we have uh, in, in the entire... rules where you don't date 
video game, like in video yeah. games. Like that should be a rule anybody follows. <laughs> don't, like, uh, you don't... don't shit where you work. <laughs> kind don't of, shit yeah, where you like... eat, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get the phrasing right. <laughs> don't, phrasing. Don't, don't dip into that. Yeah. Like, it's just a whole bunch of bad juju. That, that's and... a whole lot of drama that's waiting to happen, yeah. Yeah, but and, you know, it can always put a bad taste in your mouth because let's say, okay, you are romantically interested in your co-tank and you guys have a little romantic fling and then it goes sour because your co-tank is kind of an e-whore and has all these <laughs> other you know side flings well now you still have to raid with that person yes. but... oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've all this, i'm laughing because we've all seen this you know in, in, like, in this sense, it's, it's, it's different yeah. than a job in this sense yeah <laughs> like, it's no yeah. different just, just don't. Yeah. Because you don't want to have to sit there. Trust me. <laughs> I'll admit, I've been the stupid guy that's been there. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't want to sit through that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. You don't want to you... sit there with your one of your other DPS buddies who you were romantically interested in. Shit goes sour, and now you got to raid with them every week. It's, right. it's awkward. Right. And I ended it's up dropping the team, one of my teams because of it. Right. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and one of the terms I actually use uh, for you guys is like work spouse. Where, you know, I was at a, I one of my old jobs in corporate America, there was a really, really beautiful girl uh, named Audrey who came in. And, uh, I mean, just like guys were ogling her all the time. She used to be with the company. She left for a while. She came back. And she was always with this, like, one dude I just could not stand. He was like, if I had a nemesis at this job, it was him. And the thing was, I was like, I'd always see them around each other. And I asked her at one point, I was like, man, you guys seem like like really tight and she said oh yeah he's my work spouse and you know it's like he has a significant other at home i have a significant other you know at my home and stuff like that but when we're at work he's just the person i feel the most comfortable being around and yep. we just have that relationship mm -hmm. and i yep. uh, and all of a sudden i kind of i took that term and used it for mmos because i see that all the time it's like you make friends oh, yeah. with certain people mm -hmm. and uh and they just they become like your best friend and it's kind of since we're raiding on top of that a lot of times i, I say work spouse you know you, it's like you spend a lot of time with these people like mm -hmm. rating isn't just a pastime it's definitely you spend at least at minimum six hours a week with these people yeah and you know just kind of throwing it back to you know you have different personalities and everything and it, it it's you you know very quickly when your personalities with your team are not going to match yeah. um mm -hmm. because bickering and stuff like that happens and when you find a group of people who are like-minded you know you you definitely form a friendship with them and you might never meet these people but you spend a significant amount of your time with them you hang out in ts you might talk like through group me or line or or you know google chats or hangouts excuse me um so you still communicate with them outside the game because most raiding teams do communicate outside of game in some way, whether it's yes. with some messaging app yes. or whether it's on engine. Um, I switched to AT&T you know, so I could have free texts and messages because I was yeah. texting all the people on my old raid team when I was leading yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, at one point um, when we were, you know, with Jesse and I's tool, when we had our split team, um, I, we were texting like that was how we communicated because we didn't have messenger apps like you know we had all of y'all's phone numbers and we would text hey you guys still on for tonight let us know and we would check our phones like on lunch and be like okay well you know uh, zach's out we got to find a replacement uh -huh. so you know that's definitely you just end up getting to know somebody yeah. like even if you never meet like mm -hmm. They're still your friends. And yeah, you know, Zenoff and I are kind of like work spouses. Um, we run the guild together with Kaylee and Kasumi. We put the teams together. He does a little bit of website maintenance and he does the YouTube channel. Um, and then I do like the, what do you call me? The HR. Hey, you're there. Uh, you're, you're yeah, there. yeah, you would be <laughs> HR. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do all, like the recruiting. Human resources on my and secretary. The that's right. Uh, and <laughs> I'm much, the social chairman. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, that's basically what I do. And I'm definitely the people person. I go yes, out, I find these people, I bring 
in the guild. And I try to make sure the environment stays fun and it stays healthy. Mm-hmm. And I know yeah. that's a really weird word to throw in there, no. but with Swator, there are definitely toxic aspects of the community. PvP <laughs> being <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you um, both at the PvP same time. are probably exactly the where most going with largest that. salt packet community I have ever mm-hmm. met. Oh, and yes. you know what? I get super salty when I PvP too. And but I'm, I'm not making per- we're not making personal threats to each other though. No. Yeah. So, you know, we try to make the guild and the raiding community happy and mm-hmm. a good place and a welcoming place. And right. you know, that doesn't mean we avoid PvP and I'm not shit talking anybody no. in the PvP community not. in general. Oops, sorry, I used a dirty word. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> this will oh only God. be put on YouTube where thousands of subscribers are gonna oh, hear it. It's, right. it's totally cool. Uh, I, I was actually going to even tell you guys at the start, I'm like, hey, you know what, guys, uh, I try to keep things G-rated, but you know what, if it slips Sorry. out, it slips out, you know, oh, and I, I'm, I'm going like, to be putting oh, this, God. I just got new uh, video editing software, too, where I might be able to add in the, like, beeps, <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying, okay. Which I, <laughs> and I actually wanted to even find, like, like, like right. non-inappropriate words and do, the, like, the old Jimmy Fallon, like, you know, uh, bit with that, but anyway, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. Like, as long as, as long as we're doing this, I do want to just give a personal thank you to any people of the rating community that do listen to this. Mm. Between our sale runs, the amount of applications we've got, the amount of new members we've got, the amount of just... I don't know if support is the word you want to use, but we have gotten a lot of support from the rating community. I I want to personally thank everybody for that. <laughs> That's cool. We oh, would yes. not be where we are today if that was not the case. That's cool. We have had overwhelming support as a new guild from pub side and from mm-hmm. inside alike and mm-hmm. people that we've you know run with and people who have only heard of us and kind mm-hmm. of bumped into us and just chatted with us for a little bit. And I feel like that's what the community needs, especially for yes. raiders. Absolutely. You know, with all the new story content coming out, you know, it's definitely drawing in new people. But at the end of all that story content, they have nothing left to do but rating. Because mm-hmm. they're going to want to try. They're going to be curious. They're going to figure out what Group Finder is. Yeah. And if we can band together and make people who are curious, you mm-hmm. know, be interested in something long term, like they want to get better, they want to, you know, clear the content, and they want to see what Nightmare Brontus is all about, <laughs> yeah. then yeah. I yeah. feel like we're doing good work mm-hmm. you know i feel Agreed. like we're right. we're fostering a good community of, yeah. of players and it's expanding the player base in a way because if someone has a great experience like let's say we pug a story mode even though story mode is bolstered and you can do it fairly easily um but let's say we just pug it together and we have someone who's new and that person has a wonderful experience and he tells his buddy hey man you know that game i was playing yeah. these people are awesome Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's another person yeah. that plays the game to experience the player base only. Right. Mm. And, you know, Bioware, as someone I'll who... take my finder's fee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've said this uh, in some of my other videos, too, to, and all, to all my subscribers, because we were talking about the Dark vs. Light event, which I'm going to talk about with you guys in just a minute. But one of the things that I mentioned to them was, like, you guys are the gears that keep this game spinning. It's that layer of investment into this game that provides the oil that keeps the engine running. Because without Mm -hmm. that layer of investment of wanting to see what's coming ahead and taking that personal ownership of what you do with the player base and the players around you, Mm -hmm. I mean, this game, any game, would have died long, long time ago. You Mm -hmm. have to have people who care about it and care about the people that they play with in order to want things and to push things forward. Mm -hmm. I've said it many, many, many a time. Mm -hmm. Um, There's people we've done sale runs for. There's people that have come to us like, hey, is there any way I could sort of get in with you guys, get on a team? I was like, well, fill out an app. (laughs) This guild... (laughs) <laughs> self-promotion again yeah. this guild i've always said i got in super easy i knew the people really early i fudged my way in and made it work this guild and all the experience i have this guild is my way of giving back to the rating community cool if even mm-hmm. one person can learn anything from me as far as mechanics dps tanking healing mecha- anything if somebody learns something i've done my job that is cool. Like, yep. That's why I've got this guild. Is I don't want this game to die. Personally, I've got too many friends in this game to let it die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, 
I will be the life support that keeps this game alive until we get new raids. <laughs> Zadoff is now yeah. Atlas, <laughs> carrying the game on his shoulders. <laughs> He's right? like, yeah. I, like, I will do whatever it takes to keep this raiding community alive. I don't care if we turn out to be the last raiding guild after Intrepid dies, after <laughs> Random Force dies, Rip 4 or 5 and not good enough. Um, never forget. Um, after all those guilds are done... I want to be the one that is sitting here still being like, we're still, still, still waiting, Bioware. Still right. waiting. Hey, do you yeah. need help with that SM? We can show you I your mean, rips through that. Hey, you need help with that? We can show you that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, there's no new content. Well, every MMO has a slump in content. They mm -hmm. really do. And you will hear every player base in that game bitch about something. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Beep! Yeah, I know we're all like, oh, I'll clean it all up in editing, guys. I'll clean it up. My producing team, uh, uh, me. Fix it, fix we'll, it in post. We'll, we'll fix it in post, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you're going to have the rating community or the player base complain about something. Whether it's new content, new raids, fixing old raids, you know the gear that drops, or whatever. It's in WoW, it's in Terra, it's in Swator. Until I've cleared every single thing, and I've gotten everyone the achievements that they want in our rating uh, team, I'm content with waiting for content. Not saying I don't want raids. I would love a new raid. Yeah. But I Agreed. still haven't cleared everything in 4.0. Brontus is hard. Styrak is hard. Terror yeah. is exceptionally hard. But it keeps me coming back because I want to kill it. Yeah, the, it becomes that, uh, you know, it's a personal bit of pride. I mean, it's a measuring yep. stick mm -hmm. for where you get to. Uh, but speaking right. of content, because I think that's a really good segue into this next part. So there's been a lot of ups and downs <laughs> with the Dark vs. Light event, which I actually yes. call the love versus hate event because <laughs> I find that there's not a whole lot of middle ground with this one. But I'm really yeah, curious because I haven't actually had a chance to pick your guys' brain about it. It came out a few weeks ago, obviously, and everybody's had different experiences with it. I've been really curious, what have you guys' been, what have your impressions been of the Dark vs. Light event? Um, it's ahead, it's a good way to sort of, I sort of understand why they they did it mm -hmm. is they're trying to fill the gap between uh, Knights of the Eternal Throne and Fallen Empire. I assume that was their reasoning for doing it, yeah. but it's a way to sort of the the way uh, Musco explained it in uh, an interview. I think it was with Snave on his stream is. When you go back through, say, doing 1 to 50 on a Sith Warrior, vet players are going to get that nostalgic feeling, which I'll admit, playing my Assassin, I have gotten that. Going back to where mm. I first started and going from there. Yeah. I've gotten a slight nostalgic feeling, but for the newer players, it's like an extra layer of initiative to go and do this stuff. Yes. So if you're like a hardcore PvPer, they're like, hey, well, if you do this, we might give you these packs, yep. and you might get this out of it, or this out of it. You want to look like Revan? Do this, you might get this out of it. Yeah. And it's a nice layer of initiative. At the same time, I'm going to get flamed for everything I just said there, but I'm going <laughs> to say at the same time... There's no right or wrong answers here, guys. This is an opinion I, piece. I, exactly. Know, you're allowed to say I, I whatever already, you want. I can already... <laughs> I can already see the pitchforks and torches lining up, the firing line in front. Fire! Ah! <laughs> but um, at the same time, it is very, very lazy. Yeah. They they brought yeah. this event when this event could have been dedicated to getting Chapter 16 out on time. Mm -hmm. Or anything else. Say, a hard mode Eternal Championship, which frankly I would love. Um to doing any number of things instead of just doing this this blanket event which essentially says all the work you did in the past was for do it all over again. Right. Play the game mm -hmm. like it's at launch. Do all the flashpoints, do all the events, do all the crafting. It's like really I've done all this. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to waste my time doing biochem, cybertech, arms tech, armor mech, all of these crafting things again. Yeah. It's like I want new stuff. Yeah. But I've got to keep in mind, 
I got to keep in mind, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, we are the 1%. Mm. We are mm-hmm. the people that have sat point. here and dedicated so much time that we've done it all. Yeah. We are the 1% that are like, we need new content, whereas we look at the majority, they're doing the story content, they're just starting to break into raids, mm-hmm. they're doing all this stuff for the first time. I've got to keep that in mind when I'm yeah. sitting here like, I want new raids, I want new stuff. I'm just like, well, this is new stuff for people. And frankly, again, I'm going to get flamed for this. I personally <laughs> love the new story. Con- I personally love the story content. I played yeah. this game partially for the story. Uh, ditto. Absolutely. As, as an RPer, building Zenoff still. Like, mm-hmm. as an RPer, this is me. Zenoff is me. I have all these alts, but Zenoff is, air quotes, me. Yeah. Like, so I've been invested in this character 20 plus years now in t- three MMOs. Like, <laughs> it's me. Yeah. So, I mean, that's my stand on it. I'm, I like it. I don't. I understand the reasoning, though. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely tricky. I mean, I, go ahead, Penny. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I have a different, you know. One second. No worries. Uh, while Penny's uh fixing her mic, one of the things that uh I was actually recommending to Eric through email was that I really actually feel like a lot of this event, I think people actually would have been very okay with regrinding through old content if the rewards had been more stabilized. Where if they had given us per tier a dark versus light currency, kind of like they do with Grey Helix tokens for the Gree event, if we had had something stable like that, where we knew, okay, I can earn this many tokens and then go and buy the item that I'm looking for, yeah. if it was still those same rewards, like Revan yeah. Rewards, Armor Set, or Cecil Shots, even if I only would doing the whole event have just so much currency that I would have to make some tough choices, I still think we all would have pretty been I think we all would have been pretty happy with grinding that because then you know the reward exactly. is fixed. You know, and that's right. that's been the hardest part for me about this event. My major criticism in my emails right. with Eric is that the randomness of what comes mm-hmm. out of packs, th- this patch, especially 4.6 felt like um, this is the worst I ever felt with, with Bioware's patching, only because it felt like this time um, the rewards were so random and so low, and they were asking for quite a bit of work out of the players, and none of it was really new. There was no new bosses, mm-hmm. no new raids, no new areas, and they're just asking us to do these things. However, right. one of my positive comments was, you know, they, they last summer... I think it was last summer, maybe two summers ago, they did 12 XP for story, where that was their summer incentive to get mm-hmm. people to play the game. And I felt like this right. is their version of that this year. They just didn't put it in those terms. Where, right. You know, and this is what... Uh, and honestly, the upshot, I mean, if, if you can call it that, is you can get some of the most rare armor pieces and equipment in the game, but it's just, it's completely random. You're not sure if right. you ever will. And I want to touch on that. Yeah. Yes, you can. But here's the thing. For yeah. somebody, again, I've got to refer back to the 1% thing. Right. On the side of me, personally, I love your idea. I, w- I wish Musco or whoever would, I wish the developers would have done a token. Yeah. Because, <laughs> one, they said on a stream, it was actually the last... Uh, the last stream uh, the Switchboard developers did, it was Musco, somebody else, and Tate. Um, they said they knew bind-on pickup items were not a good idea, but it was the only way they could make it work. Yeah. Because they didn't want the GTN to get flooded with these rare items. First off, segue, then why did you put the packs on the market? Right. Anyway... I'll, exactly. I'll leave that rant any for another time. I'm back. But, <laughs> hey, welcome back. Um, yes, you can get these rare items, but first off, you have a low chance still. Yeah, it's out of my packs, low. I've gotten, I've gotten one gold item out of my, my I've only gotten five packs, but I've gotten one gold item mm-hmm. that was a black and black and white crystal that I already had. Yeah. Um, the rest of the stuff was I watched your first pack opening. You got like Ramos Drapa's set or something. I, yeah, I was I like, got, why is this even in there? Entire set <laughs> oh in my, my first gosh. five packs. I got that full set. Um, and with, wait, and let me ask you: Was that something mm-hmm. you felt was a best of armor set that you would be looking for? <sighs> Personally, no. Me neither. Nothing. None of these silver armor sets are, aside from maybe the Mandalorian armor sets, would I consider this. 
best of or iconic Star Wars armor sets that they are trying to promote this pack for. Yeah, it like Everything compared to what like... they put on the first blog page, where I mean it right. led with exactly. Satil Shan's armor set, Re- mm. Revan Reborn's armor set, you know, right. Zoxin's armor set, and, and it's like and Keyword with the word on that set, set, yes, not supplementary not or supplementary upper or, or lower upper or lower, yeah, and it's that's like, yeah, that's been again, crushing. Yes, that is definitely part of it. I open it, I'm like. Supplementary armor. Like, yeah. So I thought this was supposed to be a full set if I was getting this. Right. The I'm... only, the only reason I see to do this event for someone like me, because like I said, on the other hand, it's this is bind on pickup stuff. Mm-hmm. I've got most of this stuff. If I, the only reason I'm doing the event are the tunings, the teals armor set. Yeah. Every other armor set they have advertised for this, and of course the event exclusive stuff like the. Pioneer set and the mount and all that. Yeah. Every other set they've done this with this, the Defiant Vented Saber, the Unstable Arbiter Saber, Steel set, Revan set. <laughs> I I either haven't seen them, I haven't heard of people getting them, or I have it. Mm-hmm. Every set I've seen advertised except for the Teal set, I pretty much have. Yeah, I don't. I can admit that was one of the draws for me, and even though mm-hmm. I knew the risks, I actually got Re- Revan Reborn's uh, supplementary out of the very first mm-hmm. pack that I got at level 25 at the Heroic tier, and I was crushed that it was supplementary. <laughs> I was like, Revan Reborn, yeah! I saw oh, that. I was like, that was the greatest reaction <laughs> oh, ever. Oh, God. And the worst part was, and then I got it again <laughs> at, oh. at, uh, at Legacy Take level. I, I got the Revan Reborn supplementary again, and since they're buying right. to that character... You know you can't transfer them, and uh, mm-hmm. and this is I actually got freed in Nad's upper body five times uh, oh my during God. the course of this event. I actually gave one away from uh, I did a hyper crate, and I actually gave one of those away just before seeing you guys tonight because I was like, <laughs> I could sell it, but dude, I've got like five of them. Just take it. One of my right. one of my viewers was like, can I have it? I'm like, take it. Take the Freedom Dad's upper body set. I keep getting them for some reason. I don't even know right. why. And, but that's the I randomness mean, of it, and that's that's my right. major like chief concern. Is since the mm-hmm. you can uh, and I say this in my uh, my Dark versus Light overview video is you can put in all this effort and it's just like gambling. There's no guarantee you'll actually get out of this event what you mm-hmm. have put in, and that is what I feel makes this very unilaterally. Disappointing. Yeah. Where it just, I think that's mm-hmm. the, the that's the chord that a lot of people feel, and some people have had right. awesome luck with some of these packs. But that's that's the nature of cartel packs, and I feel like it's uh, Bioware has kind of during this event really shown its casino colors a lot. Oh yeah, and, you know, and that's that's where I feel like my angst has come in, and why I encourage players mm-hmm. to speak up about it because if you don't, they won't really have a motivation to change it, especially if people keep pumping more money into the packs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I'll admit, I'm a horrible offender of that. Like yeah. I, I worked for a casino, but I'm as guilty as anybody. I was a I'm a casino dealer, but I'll spend my money day in and day out trying to get a Kylo Ren saber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm going to let Penny talk here for a minute because she's been trying to. But, like, that's definitely the thing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm skeptical because, on one hand, yeah, they're trying to give us all this cool stuff. On the other hand, I've got to wonder how tilted the tables are. <laughs> how much of it is, oh, you are you got the chance to get Revan Reborn set, but 75% of it's going to be the supplementary armor. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just that level of skeptic right now. <laughs> me too, me too. Uh, and so, Penny, what have your thoughts been about the uh, the DVL event? And like, I guess right now we've skewed a little bit more into like the reward <laughs> side of things. Well, I want to play devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I first joined Star Wars and started playing, I did not like the universe. Hmm. I hadn't even seen the original trilogy. <laughs> That's a cool thing um, to admit to. So, I know, it's very ballsy. Um, but I had never seen the trilogy. I didn't know a lick about Star Wars. I didn't like the controls. I didn't like the gameplay. I was also playing on a really old laptops. So the graphics were terrible compared to Terra. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, over time, I fell in love with rating. After the RP aspect, um... Mostly because of, like, BC being very kind of full of kind of toxic or toxicity, like, in the community. I kind of moved out of RP because it's just rampant with gossip. And I moved into raiding. And that's kind of where I found my home. And I'll admit, I've never done 
crafting. I've never levered a crafter at all. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> at all. Never. The only crafter I have is my sage, and that's because she is an insta-60. Mm. Yeah. It's not even leveled for the new level cap. <laughs> it's like they the just gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just gave it to me, and I kind of have to accept it. Here. Yeah. Um, I've never crafted anything in the game. Um... You know, I space barred through the entire story. Kaylee actually drug me through Oricon and made it so I could not space bar. <laughs> I had to Kaylee. promise that I would not space bar through it because he told me I needed to experience the Oricon story. Like, I'm just gonna say I don't. Barring. I'm just gonna say I don't blame him for making you do that because the Oricon yeah. story and the Dreadmaster story arc is one of the greatest in the game. I, I know. I, I actually, I hate the Dreadmasters. To be perfectly honest, uh, you know, again, this is me being seen off now, saying like somebody out there is gonna flame my boards. They're gonna be like, <laughs> "God damn, Zach, that's the best storyline ever in any game of ever all time ever." Well, I'll just be like, "I." It's yeah. It's okay. But, just say, just say I love Revan. You'll be fine. But yeah, but that's the thing is, you know, it's. Uh, you know, it is a storyline they built into the game. It was it tied all the original raids together. Was the Dreadmasters, and so I could see exactly why Kayla would want you to see that on Oricon. Yes, and I mean, it was a great story. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's just that was not one of my priorities. I wasn't here yeah. to watch the story content. I wanted to raid, mm -hmm. and I space barred through. All the story content, both <laughs> Gentlemen, on my take note. Women are hardcore. and my assassins. Um, yeah. So I knew nothing about the story. Yeah. Um, so doing the dark versus light, granted, you don't have to do the story, mm -hmm. but it's an option. And the way they have the level sync now, it does make it easy to go through the planets and level. You don't have to do all those side missions like you used to. Before, no. leveling used to be extremely tedious. And with it being so streamlined, it's definitely a lot easier. And it has made me go back through and look at storylines that I may not have paid attention to when I first started playing the game. Right. Um, you know, because it, it's making you do one of every class. Mm -hmm. You know, and... If you're going to legendary. Find, like... If you're going to legendary, yes. And I don't do flashpoints. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe I was losing off and we got a normal mode or tactical, whatever they call them in your achievements, uh, yeah. achievement. And he's like, you've never done this. Like, <laughs> false emperor. Because I hadn't, it was false emperor. Yes. It wasn't, I'd done it in hard mode, but I'd never yeah. done it in story. Yeah. Uh, and it's different than it used to be too, as a tactical, as opposed to like how it originally came out. Cause that actually mm -hmm. used to be a really, really awesome, uh, four man flashpoints. Where, I mean, you had to pick up special grenades at the end to be able mm -hmm. to push Malgus off the edge. And, I mean, it was really intricate. And now it's it's pretty much a raffle stop, like, with your with your tactical group. Bit. Um, and you can even do it on but, solo mode, which is really cool. Uh, but, yeah, but the story of it's really cool. And it's a neat flashpoint still with good bosses. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. I digress. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, with the Dark versus Light, it's kind of making me do all this. Mm. Like, it's making me revisit things that I just kind of skipped over in my haste to get to 55 or 60, you know, whichever was the level cap. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of making me revisit that. Um, personally, I stopped buying cartel crates off of the cartel market um, probably about a year ago. Smart. Um, if I want them, I use in-game credits to purchase them off the GTN. Very smart. Or I just buy whatever it is I want from that pack um, from the GTN. Um, or I'll buy them from, like, uh, Kasumi or Zenoff. Yeah. Um, with, they open their packs and whatever they don't want or plan on listing, then I'll just buy it off of them. Um, mostly because it does get very addicting. Mm -hmm. Like, it's definitely addictive. You buy the packs and you have fun opening them, which that's why it's partly fun to do the Dark vs. Light event. You get cartel packs without having to open it, without having to pay for it. You right. know, like you don't have to fork out any money. You just have to fork out your time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, in my opinion, that's kind of nice. Um, with them putting it on the market, I mean, there's going to be people who are not doing the event. I can totally see why they put it on the cartel market. It doesn't right. mean that they're getting better items than you. They're still getting shafted just as hard as you are. Um. <laughs> I can attest to that. I actually uh, did buy a hyper crate, and I've already done about uh, however many crates yeah, as, as is possible up to the current level. And then I'll get my last yeah. 30, which is like another hyper crate worth as soon as I finish Chapter 16. So, yeah, for sure. Yep. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I can see that. There's going to be people who are not doing the event because they have one of every class. They've already done all the crafting. And this isn't something that they would necessarily need to do. I'm doing it because it's something to do in between raiding. It's something to do in the downtime. And I can do it by myself. Um, and I get rewarded for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's one thing. Yeah, there's so many ups and downs to, to the Dark versus Light event, and and I've heard these comments come because one of the first promotions I did was, you know, give me your guys' opinion on how to make the game better. And a lot of guys actually weighed in on the DVL event, like, specifically, because it was the most recent, you know, thing that Bioware has pushed forward. And there's been such highs and lows of it. I mean, everybody has a different take and a different experience on it. Uh, there's a lot of people flaming boards because they're just so pissed, and I would agree, I think, with Zenoff that a lot of these guys are, are vets. You know, I've, I have watched every cutscene of every story multiple times. I can't even tell you how many times I've romanced Kira Carson because she's a fox. <laughs> you know, it's like, we've, we've, done the, we've done it. You know, I, like, I had one guy actually call me a beta baby, oh, bitchy beta baby in, uh, in one of my tacticals because I actually had mentioned, I was like, I would have liked a lot of this stuff to be retro because I mean, I've, I've put in the work, I've put in the hours, mm -hmm. you know, and God forbid they ever put in an hour counter in Star Wars because they used to have one of those in WoW where you could see like how many hours you've actually played and it would go up into days and then weeks and then months and then years and uh, like, and that's why that. I Flash played. Oh. Flash played. Oh my god. I, I can't because I know uh, in this game it would tell me I've basically killed I've like three years of my life. For my... 47 days, 3 hours, and 33 minutes on my um, my Merc, Rosa. On my, on my Marauder, 110 days, 22 hours, and 7 minutes. Oh Jesus, yeah. I, I don't even want to guess. I can log over to my Assassin. And... She's at like 95 days. Yeah, and those are just specific <laughs> characters. That's not even totally yeah, right. all of your it's account. No, that's wide. not totally yeah. them all. And no. so I kind of feel like when, uh, when Bioware kind of does an event like this and I feel isn't really listening to the players, I mean, this is a lot of time. I mean, you know, uh, and hours that people are talking about having, you know, some uh, pent up feelings about. So it's definitely one mm -hmm. of those things where I feel it's cathartic, I think, to get some of these ideas out there. And then one of the reasons Eric and I have had a dialogue going is because I'm usually a little bit more constructive. And, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of using like a currency for this event, I think, would have really helped. I hope they do that in the future. Uh, as opposed to that. Anyway, uh, we're getting a little short on time, and I know you guys probably have a raid tonight because <laughs> you guys are raiders. <laughs> you know, surprise. And uh, one of the things, though, that I'm really excited about because of all days to do this, I did not know they were going to be announcing the next expansion, you know, which is coming out. It's, it's coming out sooner than I thought, too. It's coming out this fall, where I thought it was probably not going to come out until maybe even in next year. Um, so, obviously, Knights of the Eternal Throne, First impressions, first thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um. We we don't really know much, for mm. one. Um, so let me let me rephrase. What is it you would like oh. to see in Knights of the Eternal Throne? As I would long like an operation. Fans. It's going to be beat to death. <laughs> I I do want a raid. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. I don't care if it's as short as EC. I want a raid. And I mean. I, again, I've said this to guild, guildies before. Unless you're 100% operations for either 8-man or 16-man or both, you can't exactly cry too hard for new raids, because you've still got stuff to clear. Right. You've still mm -hmm. got stuff that you haven't killed yet. I'll admit, there are still things I want to kill before I before the new, uh, new the presumed new raid comes out, because they have confirmed they're working on group content, provided it's a raid, I want my 16-man Nightmare Council kill, which is one of the things I'm missing. I need I one of the that. things I'm missing too. I need that. I need Revan, and I need 16-man Master Blaster, and I'm good at that point. Yeah. Like at that point, I will cry and wreak havoc for new raids. I will be at the mm -hmm. front lines leading the charge against Bioware. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But until then, I preach it to my guild all the time because, frankly, I get tired of seeing it. <laughs> but yeah. I'm like, guys. You've got stuff to kill. Mm -hmm. Don't cry for new raids when you haven't downed everything yet. Yeah. And I will preach that message to anyone at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll sit here and I'll see people crying for a new raid, and I'm like, God, dude, you haven't done any of Nim Palace. You haven't, yeah. done, you haven't done TOS. You haven't done yeah. any of Nim Terror. You haven't done... It's like, experience the content, because yeah. 
God forbid they pull a Terra on us and rip it away. Yeah. Because then you're going to be crying for it even more. Yeah. But I want... I do want... If they do nothing more than new chapters, class balance, and operation, I'm good. Yeah. I will, I will sing Bioware's praises from the heaven. Yeah. But well, that's my biggest thing. If my, there's three. Yeah. My, my theory is this uh, the, right now. Which is, I really feel like with Knights of the Fallen Empire and where they're leaving it, depending on where the battle for Odessa ends up, I actually think there's the potential here for two raids. Um, kind of like DF and DP worked, where they're two halves of kind of the same coin. Where Knights of the Fallen Empire, we have characters like Scorpio who are now in charge of a fleet. We have characters, you know, that are like Valen who very easily and quickly could betray Arkin. I really feel like if they almost have the potential here for two raids where you fight people like Scorpio and Arkin, and then in the actual final raid, maybe at the end of Knights of the Eternal Throne, you fight Valen and uh, Valkorion, or something like that, where they where they kind of balance it out that way. Um, that's just my opinion, by the way. I'm throwing that out there now, just in case whatever happens, I'm on the record. Okay, if we're, if we're If we're throwing out, if we're throwing out ideas, yeah. I want two things. I want a Valen romance option. Where you can go dark side. Wow, you can, really? You can kill. I want. Here's how I can see it playing out for a dark side option. Yeah, do tell. You turn, you turn on the alliance once you have control of the eternal throne. Oh yeah. So, let's be honest. Valen's power hungry. Yep. Valen sides with you. After you kill Arkin. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'll serve you, but you have to kill your alliance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, could be possible. Could be possible. Listen, Bioware, I want that. And two. <laughs> Musco, I know you're listening. I want a Kefis mount. <laughs> Give me a Kefis mount. I want a Kefis mount in the next pack. I yes. want a Kefis. I want a Bormu. I want a uh, Kel Dragon. Mm -hmm. After you give me those three things, do what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about you, Penny? What are you What are you kind of looking out of uh, in this next expansion? I mean, I would love a raid. Yeah. Having the next season of chapters, that's all great. You got your story content. You've had two seasons of story content. Mm -hmm. Having a raid or two would be amazing. And uh, that's what I really strive for. And you know what? Give something to the PvPers. Give them a new map. Give them like a mm -hmm. Knights of the Fallen Empire uh, PvP type map. Not just like the Odessan, like King of the Hill thing. Like. Give them something similar to the Eternal Championship, where they have yeah. to go out in rounds and battle for the, you know, battle to the death or something. Yeah. Um, so I think that would be, I think that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, as far as romance options and stuff, I mean, that's just give or take. That's part of the story content, whatever. Um, so that's what I want. In-game, I want yeah. a couple of new operations. That That's yeah. what I have my heart set on. And, I mean, if he puts a crate Dragon mount and in the game, I'd, yeah. <laughs> that would be, be kind of cool. You uh, brought up PvP. I uh -huh. One thing I'd love to see in PvP, whether the hero engine could handle it or not, is yet to be seen. Cross-faction rating. Uh, yes, I want cross-faction rating, but on the side of PvP, mm -hmm. I want something like Voidstar, but better. Think like... <laughs> uh, I don't know, Zach, if you played on real tournament or not. Uh, no, but no, haven't played on real time. I want, I want something that's a large scale, like we're talking like sixteen on sixteen, mm -hmm. large scale objective map. That's like, okay, one person. It's like almost like one side is playing the part of the Eternal Empire, uh, the, the Infinite Empire. Whether the, I can't think of it off the top of my head, my <laughs> brain fart. <laughs> yeah, and the other side is playing the Alliance, and say the alliance is storming a star fortress and you've got to fight your way through fighting players and maybe npcs and you've got different objectives to do like say sabotage a reactor and then go control the bridge and then go do all this different stuff i want a really large scale objective based map in pvp yeah uh uh, for me, I can safely say what I really miss and looking forward to in the next expansion is I miss my old companions, especially the the Republic side love interests. I miss Kira, I miss Nadia, 
and I would like to see my companions be a little bit have more weight than like just new versions of Pokemon, where I feel like a lot of the companions you're able to get in the game now. Remember when they uh, pitched Nico Okar guys, and everyone was like, "Whoa, cool! That'd be awesome to have a new companion." And then at the same time that came out, we all realized, "Dude, you can have like 30 companions now." Yeah. You know? yeah. It was like there was like a million of them, and there's more ways coming out. So there's this part of me that I would like to see you know, some of these characters come back and actually have a, a real gravitas. I mean, I think Scorpio at this point probably has had the best impact and arc, but I feel like most mm-hmm. of the characters we've gotten were Imperial side. Uh, I don't feel like we've had much Republic. And I'd like to see those Republic characters again, uh, for sure. And the storyline. Um, hashtag bring back Jaysa. Um, yeah, and Jaysa. <laughs> Big time Jaysa, um, yeah. I will say that that's a good point. I want... I want your love interest to be more like, not, hey, we had this talk and now you're a total stranger. Yeah. Like what happened <laughs> to what happened to like when the game first came out, and you'd go on your ship one time and you'd just be talking and you go on the ship another time. It's like, eh, I kind of like you, and then mm-hmm. you go on again. It's like all this different stuff, and it's like now it's boiled down to. Hey, you want to hook up? Sure. Okay, that's done. Yeah, one um, conversation. <laughs> one conversation done. It's like, I want more weight on that love interest side of it. Mm -hmm. Like, that person gets sent away on a mission, and they might not make it back, or they might make it back, or you have to go save them, or something. Yeah. Because right now, it's like, they're just just there. Yeah. Classic Bioware stakes, you know, from from a lot of their old games. Absolutely. I'll be honest. I want to be, like, at the end of this, I want, like... I want I wanted to be pulling at my heartstrings like when Miranda died in Mass Effect Three. <laughs> oh, she didn't die in my game. <laughs> she died in my game. Oh, <laughs> you. oh, I loved her so much. I uh, I actually gave her blonde hair like the voice actress Yvonne Strahovski. Oh, so I actually nice. I was a modder for P uh, for ME two and three to make that happen and loved her to death. So I'm with you, man. If she died in my game, I'd be like, no, right? why Miranda? No. <laughs> yeah. So I feel you on that. All right. So uh, so yeah, we're we're way over time but i did have a couple last questions for you guys that uh you know i don't know if you guys have ever seen like inside the actor studio where you know uh what's his name lipton always asks his his guests there like the same <laughs> rote questions right i'm still working on them but i did have a few questions for you guys right. and so this one is for penny first uh if you could sum up in 50 words or less your best advice to new gamers what would it be oh man um there's no two. matter what I was game like, you're there's playing, three plus um. <laughs> I know, right? No matter what game you're playing, you should always have fun doing it. Mm. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Nice. How about you, Zenoff? Same question. Um, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Penny said. If make sure you're having fun doing it. Don't treat it like a job. This game is not a job. It's it's there so everybody can chill. Yeah, that's good, guys. That's real good. All right, the oh. second question. What would be your best advice to people who are on the fence about coming back into Star Wars? Um, if you're on the fence, I would say wait for Chapter 16 to be released, hmm. and then take a weekend, veg out, play through all the chapters, and actually play through the chapters. Don't space bar it. Mm-hmm. It is story content, so actually pay attention. Um, and then, you know what? Even if you cleared the raids, like, at tier, like, let's say you did TFB right when it came out, go through NIM TFB again. Mm-hmm. I think you'd be shocked. It's not as easy as people sometimes make it out to be. Mm-hmm. Go through and revisit the content that you may have done before and kind of see what they did with it. Um, that would be, you know, if they're coming back, that's what I would do. Cool. How about you, Zenoff? Um... Yeah, that's honestly that's about right. Come back probably after chapter sixteen. They'll probably have a little bit more announced, um, hopefully. Um, other than that, if you're wanting to come back for rating, hopefully we get something. But there are definitely some checks of now that are harder than when it was at tier. So mm-hmm. definitely give it another shot. Very cool. All right, the next question: What would you like to see to make this game better? But again, this is the 50 words or less version. <laughs> oh, thank Great. Um, to make the game better? 
Yeah, which is a very big, broad blanket statement. This is the same question I asked uh, my viewers on my first giveaway, and I, I literally just subjectively grabbed my top five. Legacy-wide and... money. Yes! yes! That was my number one pick from one of my up viewers. Put down option. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes. Put up, put down option. Oh, that is good too. That is like, can good. I write a book on this? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Zen? Uh, yeah. Put up, put down option. Yeah. Um, more class balance, more frequent class balance. Oh. More frequent raid raid balance, more frequent PvP, just more frequent balance overall. Mm -hmm. Um. Cross RNZ mount. Okay. Kefis, Kefis mount. Kefis mount. <laughs> Gotta get that um, Kefis mount in there. I want another secret boss. Okay. Like hateful, yes. dreadful. Hateful oh dread. yes. I want another one. Oh, that's yes. a good one. I want another one in the new raid. Like, uh, should... I don't know what. I want something. Dude, I, I wish if that had been a part of my promotional, I probably would have picked that. I actually think that's that's something I really miss is like running into an area and knowing that oh, what is this item and I don't know what this does and, and finding that out and some other raid group found out and you felt us down. All right, uh, next question. All right, so what if you could pick one moment playing Star Wars: The Old Republic that has been your favorite moment? What would it be? Oh man. That's yeah. again. You're asking me to I, narrow it down. I, I'll tell you mine. So okay. when I first played this game, my very first character was a Jedi Shadow, and the first moment, you know, outside of the beta, in actual live, like the game had just launched, my favorite moment probably of all time was the very first time I tackled the Coruscant world boss. And it was just mobs of us on Coruscant at the time on multiple different maps going after a boss we knew nothing about. And I was on my Jedi Shadow and I was wearing my very first piece of prototype blue gear that I had gotten from the Esselus. And I had like a, you know, a double-bladed you know, green lightsaber and I was doing backstabs behind the boss. And it was at that moment I just new it's like i had already fallen in love with in the beta but like every time i go back and think of like my favorite memory it always goes back to that moment because for me for some reason that was like the game at its most pure you know when it had just come out and i was doing something that i just thought was amazing uh on a character that i loved with all these other people doing it all at the same time for the first time if i had to put my finger on that moment it would it would have to be when I came back to BC for the second time, mm. and I joined up with Dark Hunters, and everybody in Guild was sort of hearing whispers about Hateful. And I came back, I was like, look, you guys want to do this? Fine, I'm going to do this. I formed it up, I took an eight-man team, and I cleared out all the old ops. Uh, SNV, TFB, DF, and DP. Hmm. I took them through, I taught them the mechanics for it, some of them had already known it, some of them were from guilds like Tomb of Sorrows, and stuff like that. Um, I took them through it, <laughs> and I was like, look, I'm going to start handpicking from Tomb of Sorrows and Dark Hunters. We're going to run this, we're going to kill it. And the crowning moment, it is still on YouTube, um, is when we got that first kill. Mm. The amount of cheering, it nearly... It actually blew out one of the speakers in my old headset. Like <laughs> that's it was great. ridiculous. It was absolutely amazing. Oh, that's great. How about you, Penny? And oh, sorry. That's, that's when I'm. That's when I was like, yeah, this, this, this is what I was meant to do in this game. <laughs> nice, nice. How about you, Penny? What would you say your favorite moment in the game has been? Um, honestly, it was. When I first got on my actual real like first raid team mm. and was able to heal as a raid healer, um, going back through and being able to do the content with my team that I hadn't got to experience on BC, like my um, like on DF and DP, you know, people can say what they want about 3.0, but if you didn't have coordinated tanks on DF Brontus, even in 3.0, you would still die because the orbs would get in and they'd pop. Yeah. And on DP, mm -hmm. if you didn't know what you were doing on reaches, you're going to die. <laughs> um, yeah. So people can say what they want. The checks might have been easier. The healing might have been easier. But the actual mechanics were still there. And if you didn't know what you were doing, you 
you know, you weren't going to clear it. Mm -hmm. Um, so getting on my first team and actually being able to go through and do like the actual content that was there, which was, um, toss and rav. And then also getting to go back and experience the NIM versions of hard mode raids that I had already done was definitely one of my shining moments. Like, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel you on that one. All right. So uh, I have a bunch of questions, but we kind of already touched on these. And I didn't realize when I was writing these out, I was like, man, okay. So uh, if you could say anything to Eric Musco and the dev team, what would it be? I was like, oh, I think we pretty much covered that uh, in a pretty good one. Uh, and what you guys want to see to make the game better. Uh, though, I guess the last question I'd really want to ask you guys is, what is the thing you are most proud of accomplishing in this game? Uh, thing we're most proud of accomplishing? I think the answer is probably going to be the same for both of us, this guild. <laughs> yeah, good answer. Very good this, answer. This guild and this community that uh, Penny, Caitlin, Kasumi, and I... And frankly, everybody in the guild have built together. It's by far like my crowning achievement in this game. <laughs> cool, cool. Penny, uh, agreement? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that's pretty close. <laughs> cool. I mean, you know, we we run a really successful guild. We, mm -hmm. you know, have a lot of teams and a really great player base. And we've touched a lot of people um, and given them hope for the raiding community to grow. So I think that's probably one of the moments I'm, or one of my, I'm getting flustered. Huh. <laughs> uh, one of the moments you're uh, proud of accomplishing? Yes. Very cool. Well, hey guys, it is coming up on an hour and a half, which is actually about 30 minutes longer than I thought we were going to go. Uh, and I don't want to keep you guys all night, but uh, to thank you guys for being my very first two ever interviewees, uh, I do have a little something for you. Uh, I actually have uh, 450 cartel coins and an M8 mini pet for each of you. And so that's just my way of just thanking you guys very much for, for being here for the first time. Oh. Well, thank you, Zach. I feel so special. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, it's just it's one of the ways I can show you how much I've appreciated you guys uh, sharing some time. And hopefully, to the viewers who see this, hopefully they will also benefit from your expertise. And I always want to make sure that no one walks away from my show empty-handed. Aw, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm just going to do my outro then. So, guys, this has been Zach, and uh, this has been Penny and Xenoff from Morons and Mayhem. I uh, just want to thank them so much for their time, and we're hopefully going to look to do this again sometime pretty soon. So keep posted, keep checking out my website. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.